During our office hours webinar this week, uh, Alfonso popped in and he says, hey, I've got a lot of apartments and each one has a water meter to it, but the water company is giving us just the meter reading and I need to be able to track the difference between last month's water meter uh, reading and this month so I can calculate the number of gallons per apartment so I can rebuild my tenants. So how do we track that monthly water consumption when all you get is a running total? So, well, we created a table in a QuickBase application and uh, it'll take in the data for the monthly meeting readings and those include the date, the meter, and we can create a formula um, field to actually concatenate what the date and the meter uh, reading is. That, that, that allows us to be able to have something that's unique about that date and that meter. We can also create another table and this is where every time we create a monthly meter reading by import over on the right side, it, there's an automation that's going to fire that's going to generate a record over here as with this date meter value here. Okay, what we'll do then is also pass over what the meter reading is for that period of time. We'll then create a key field, which is that date meter field, and set up a relationship so that this is um, the parent of the meter readings. So once we, so what we've got here is we're creating records here, and every time we create them, it's copying them over here. Since this is the key field, we can make a relationship, and now all we have to do is update this reference field so that it's looking at the previous date so now we've got the current date and it pulls down what the previous date is. So here it comes. There's the previous date meter reading. Now remember, this is the key field. We have to make a formula field that will be put into this reference field that will automatically take this date, figure out the previous date, put that in here, which allows us then to pull down the meter reading of that previous month, which allows us to subtract from meter the previous month's value and we can get gallonage per record. So let's go take a look at how that might happen. Here's a, an example of a spreadsheet, date, meter, and meter readings. And you can see uh, each one of the apartments has their own meter and this total is getting bigger and bigger. And the difference between the previous month and the current month is the gallonage used during that time. So what we'll do is we'll copy this. We'll come back over to QuickBase. Now, we've got that monthly statement table in here and I've taken all the data out of here, but I'm going to um, import into here the data feed that we have. So let's pass that in. It's going to go into the monthly. Uh, it will say import this data. Now the data that we've got is the date, the meter, and the meter reading. So let's import that data. Okay, 24 records. It's the equivalent of two meters. And in the background, what's happening, there's an automation that's fired that says whenever a record is created, I want you to pump that data, that known data up here. And if I look down here, you can see it's actually pumping the data up and it's bringing back down this previous month's data. Now, why isn't this one? It's because the automation is still running here. I'm going to refresh and now they should all be here now. And they are. So let's take a look at one of the, the records here. This is the, the data here. I'm going to go into edit mode so you can see what it is. That's the what we'd call a scale of field. This is something that the import filled in this and this. And these are the three items that we know and love here. Now, what we need to do is to be able to make something unique about this, which is the date and meter. And this is strictly a concatenation of the date and the meter. And if you right click and edit the field value, uh, it's just the date and this, and it's a um, text field. So we'll let's see what other calculations we've got going. Now, what we also want to do is figure out what the last day of the month is. What if they put it in on February 27th or something? And that's un highly unlikely, but th because the known is that this is the last day of the month. So let's take a look at a field just in case this was not the exact date. Uh, edit. Let's take a look. And what this does is it says, well, this is the date they gave me. I want to know what the last day of the month is. 
and that will produce a date which is, we can use further on down the down the line here. So now that we've got the last um, date, we can then calculate what the previous month is based upon this. So let's right click and edit that. And here we have the last day of the month. We switch it to a work date because I'm going to sub subtract some time to get into the previous month. And then I'm going to apply that last day of the month thing again to get us our new one. So in order to do this workday add by subtracting time, um, we have to switch it to a work date and then switch it back to a date because in the end we're looking at a date, right? So anyway, this is calculating what the last day of the previous month is. And now let's go back. And so we want to create a, um, a field here, which is the previous date. Uh, month and meter. And we're going to use this field to be plugged into the reference field. Now, let's take a look at the relationship between both of these tables. And there's the relationship here and here. You remember when we when a record is created in this table, it's going to copy that data over here. And I want that field that's filled in to be the key field. And that's the date and meter that's being published from here over here. Now, when we come down to here, the related meter, this is the reference field. This is usually a drop down box where you select what the date and meter is of the previous month. And how do we get the previous month's uh, um, identity into this field? Click. What we can do is actually take the field value that's called the previous um, date uh, meter and put it in there and it will automatically connect up the relationship and pull down that previous month's gallonage. So let's take one more time, take a look at what that uh, previous month's value is. So we've calculated this previous month's value and now we've put it um, here, which brings down the previous month's value by a lookup field, and that gives us the ability to subtract what the current meter reading is from the previous to give us the gallonage here. The only thing we haven't looked at, and let's go back over here, you can see these are all posted here. Uh, after they happen in the, the first table, they, they're published here so we can use them again. So um, let's see. Uh, the only thing we haven't done is shown you the automation. So let's go over to the settings. We'll come down here to the automations. And really pretty much uh, let's uh, look at the triggering event. Whenever somebody adds a record to the monthly statement, and that's the only thing we're doing, what it does is it adds a record into the parent table. And this is the key field, the date meter. And we're put, taking the, the, the original date meter and pumping it into there. That's that formula we created to, uh, that is a concatenation. It pumps it into here. And it also takes what the current reading is and pumps it in over here. And uh, so then we, what we end up with is that relationship between here and here this is my present month. I need to pull down my previous month. Now I have both of them here and I can do a subtraction uh, between the two. We cover things like this in our daily webinars and their office hours every weekday, Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. East Coast time. You can find a link at quickbase.com webinars. Hope to talk to you soon.